So put your text box, obviously you know time to change your text and what have you to whatever you want to mark up. Apply it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you need to rotate it 90 degrees. You press control on your left and right cursors, it rotates. The rotary only marks on the zero line. When you when you set the rotary up in the machine, basically the way that I set it up, if we just move that text out of the way, I draw a rectangle. Yeah. And then we set the rectangle to a hundred millimeters wide by zero millimeters tall. Apply that. And then put to origin so it's on the zero line. Okay? Put your rectangle in. Put something long and thin in the rotary. I usually use like a 4mm Allen key or a 3mm Allen key or something like that. Get your part tight and then set your part tight and trace it. So you want that you want that line top dead centre on the Allen key here. Yeah? yeah, so with the rotary you should have got three small rectangular pieces and then one L piece. You screw the, the pieces we use, you basically screw the three rectangular blocks down and that's your marker for your, so you put those right up against the edge of the rotary device and then use the L piece to clamp it down into the bed of the machine. So when you mark, it always marks on the zero line, okay? So when you're doing a flat mark, you're limited by your 100 by 100, if that's the lens size you've got, mark area, yeah? Yes. When you're doing rotary, you're not limited by that because effectively it always marks on the zero line. So let's say, for instance, you're doing a 100mm bangle or something like that, and you want to put a mark all the way around it, you just do obviously 100mm diameter times pi, it'll give you 315mm circumference or thereabouts, yeah? And you can mark all the way around that if you want. So you can have a, like a 300mm long mark, because it always marks, it always marks on the zero line. Okay, so you've got to make sure that if people remove the rotary, it goes back in exactly the same place, so top dead center is on the zero line. So we've got our text here that we're going to mark. Okay. So when we trace it, we'll move it into position so it marks onto the ring. Set the center of the text to the zero line. Sometimes you'll get rings with a stone in the top of it or something like that, and they want to mark opposite the stone if you mark it on the inside. Yeah? So when you're going to mark it all, then you set the zone, set the stone to top dead center. And then you set the, the text to the zero line, so when it marks, the center of the text should be exactly underneath the stone, yeah? So I put the text, so the center of the text is on the zero line. Yeah, yeah so you know the, basically, effectively, the center of the text will be bottom dead center. So you have, let's say if you've got a diamond, a diamond ring or something, you'll have the diamond at the top, top dead centre, and then it'll mark the centre of the text, bottom dead centre, so then it should be, the text should be equal, equidistant around the bottom of the ring, yeah? So, we hatch the text, as you would do normally in a flat mark. So get your hatch set for the material you're going to be marking. Okay. When you're doing, if you're just doing text, you can use any, any hatch you want. If you're doing, uh vector files on the rotary you need to turn the outline off change the file change the lay the uh, hatch type so it doesn't mark the verticals it only marks the horizontals yeah correct and do that yeah. for both hatches or all hatches being used yeah and turn the mark outline off. So we're tracing on the part, we've got the power settings set, we're hatched and everything, yeah? So you click on, go, go into your rotary. And then, because we're just doing text, rotate text mark. So rotate text mark is just for text, yeah? And then the one above it, rotary mark, that's for doing uh, vector files and text. So click on that one, rotate text mark. This window appears. So all you need to do is put in your part diameter. So if you go into your system button, 
Yes. Uh, an external axis one. So we've got axis one is enabled at the top, yeah? Yes. ID yeah. is Y. Yeah. Pulses per round is 3,200. Uh, that's probably what it is. I've got 10,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we've got minimum distance is minus 360, degree, uh, 360 mil. Yes. Max distance is 360 mil. Yes. Min speed is 200. Yes. Max speed is 400. Plus 1200. Okay. Uh, uh, ACC time, the acceleration time is 100 millimeters per second. Yeah. Got a go to start position after marking is ticked. Uh, the bottom speed, 800 pulses per second. Yeah. Over onto the other side. So we've got rotate axis is ticked. Yeah. Gear ratio of one. Yeah. Uh, part yeah, diameter yeah, is what would be part yeah. diameter set to. Yeah. yeah. Underneath that, we've got zero is on a grey tick. Yes. Home speed is 800 uh, pulses per yeah. second. Z homing timeout is at 1,000 millimetres a second. Uh, scale comp is one, space comp zero, shear comp zero. So you're aware that when you're on the rotary, you press trace, yeah? To cancel the trace, you've got to press escape. So if we quit that now then, so if we go into rotary, rotary mark, okay? So, the only thing that we need to change on the rotary mark one is your part diameter, like you did on the other one, yeah? yeah? And split size. You have your part diameter, which you have to set in both of them regardless, yeah? So let you set your split size to your hatch size. So if you set your hatch to 0.02, set your split to 0.02. If you set your hatch to 0.03, set your split size to 0.03. So basically, when you do rotate text mark, because you're using a computer font, yeah, the software knows how much to mark and then index on to the next character. Yeah, when you're doing a vector file, effectively a solid image, it doesn't. So you have to tell it when to rotate. When you're doing vector files, like a solid image, it doesn't. So you have to tell it when to rotate. And to try and avoid getting lines in the image, you want basically want it as small as possible. So it's so technically you always want it uh, etching at top dead center. Okay, so then just, uh, so where you've got your split size, next to that you've got your distance per, which is the same as on the other one, where you can just rotate, tell it to rotate a certain amount. And then just to the left of that, you've got your invert button, so that works exactly the same on both rotary mark and rotate text mark. And over to the left hand side, you've got four soul split, so what mark by split line is, if you've got, a, like, let's say, let's say for instance, you're doing a company logo or something like that, and there's gaps in it, yeah? So you can get, you can tell it to rotate in the gaps. The one, two, three, four there, yeah? So what you can do in between the one and the two, double click, and it puts a red line in. Can you see that? Once, it, yeah. once the line's in there, you can grab it and move it up and down. So you left click on it and you can move it to get it into the, into the line. So what that will do now, it will mark, it'll go to that first red line there, mark that character, and then go on to the next one and basically move and then mark whatever's in between those red lines. So if you're getting lines when it rotates, if there's gaps in the image, you can get it to do it. You can get it to mark by split line. If you've messed up with one of those red lines and you want to get rid of it, just right click on it and it'll disappear. Right, generally, to get a black mark, I would have. Uh, a speed of 300, power at 95%, and I would use those hatch settings that we had before. So hatch one and two, both enabled. 
so the degrees, so hatch one at zero degrees, hatch two at 180 degrees, both at 0 0.02 millimeters for your line space. I wanted a deepish engrave, but then wanted a, a light mark. So I used those settings to get a deep engrave and then put a cleaning yeah. pass on. Yeah? Okay. So a cleaning pass setting would be on that, so you put that onto hatch three. So uh, we have hatch three enabled. Can you see my screen? Yeah, so we've got hatch three enabled with a cross hatch yeah. at 45 no, degrees. And then using a different pen color. So I've got it set to red to the red pen, okay? Yeah, so your power settings then, if you set it to uh, three repetitions, for the for the cleaning past this, so on the red pen, yeah, three repetitions. Yeah. Uh, set your speed to one thousand five hundred millimeters a second, yeah. Power at forty percent, and the frequency of fifty kilohertz. So basically, you use hatch one and two to do a deep engrave, so that will turn it black and then use hatch three to clean the black out to turn it sort of silver again or goldy colored again or white or something.